Good evening, and welcome to the regularly scheduled Clawson City Council meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation done by Mayor Pro Tem Matt Albrecht. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, we are grateful to you for your love. We ask that you would grant to us your love, your wisdom, your patience, all of which uh, we are in need of. I thank you for uh, bringing us here this evening, and I ask that you would um, give us wisdom to make the best decisions for our community. Amen. 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 Mayor Woolley? Here. Councilmember Aris? Here. Councilmember Milan? Here. Councilmember Moffitt? Here. Councilmember Albrecht? Here. The first item on the agenda is consideration of approving the following consent agenda items. Um, what is included on the consent agenda this week is the minutes of the regularly city council meeting that was from Tuesday, October 16th, and a special city council meeting held on Tuesday, October 30th um, to review city planner presentations. Mayor, I move the consent agenda to be approved as listed. Support. Are there any questions, comments, corrections? Roll call, please. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. The next item on the agenda is a presentation by the Guardian Angels Catholic School Robotics Team. So I'll ask the team to come up here. The floor is yours. Welcome so much for, for being here. Uh, tell us who's going to speak for you. Please get behind. Oh, you've got a microphone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's on? Okay. I am Laura Hall. I'm one of the team captains and a driver for our team. This is Michael Sanoa. He's another driver. This is Caitlin Grasick, one of our builders. Uh, William Hedges, one of our builders. Lily Bell, one of our builders. Ben Szynski, one of our builders. And Ava Bunau, another one of our builders. <laughs> um, so, here we are here to tell you about what we do and so we are part of a program called FTC, which stands for First Tech Challenge. So basically what happens is First, which is a company, gives us this challenge and this playing field to play it on. And we have to build a robot within a certain amount of time to complete a certain amount of tasks. And depending on what we do for those tasks, we get a certain amount of points. We compete against other teams and with other teams, with alliances. And basically, it teaches us about building, engineering, programming, because we have to build, program and build the robot by ourselves with our mentors. And then we, uh, like, oh, uh, something that we call cooperation, which we're cooperating with other teams, but we're also competing against them. So for how matches work, we may be with one, alliance, uh, one uh, other team, for one match, but the next match they, that we play, they may, we may be playing up against them. So we basically have to know a lot of our other teams and our team's uh, weaknesses and strengths. So this year, the uh, first sent out us a video about what we, what we were to do, and it is based on the first expedition of the, to the moon. And what we have to do is we have this lunar lander, which we did not bring today because it is very big, and we have to hang our robot somehow onto it and bring it down, and then we have to do the playing field. Now, for the game, there's 30 seconds of autonomous, which basically where it's all pre-programmed. And so we get a certain amount of points for lowering our robot down from the lunar lander, driving over and doing something called sampling, which what we do is we use these blocks and these balls, which there'll be two of these blocks 
uh, no, two of these balls and one of these blocks. And we have to knock off this, which is called a gold block. And if we knock it off of where it, the, its position, we get a point. But if we knock off this, which is called, which we call it silver, then nothing happens and we get no points. Then, after we do that, we have to drive into the crater, which is what this is, and somehow park ourselves into part of the crater or all of the crater. Then, after that, we have something called driving, like where we drive the robot called teleop. So basically, we can do certain things in teleop where it's controlled by two drivers, and we use these joysticks and this and two phones that connect to each other to drive the robot. So we will show you what we do and how to drive. So one of uh, so the main tasks for teleop is to grab these balls and blocks and put them into the lunar lander, which I really wish we had the lunar lander, but we don't, sadly. So that, and that's what this arm is for right here, to pick up and um, to pick up the box, and then we have to put up, it's like 22 inches. So that, and so then we have something after that called end game, where we have to basically lift back onto the lunar lander. And to do that, we use this right here, which helps us lift, like go up onto the lunar lander. And then we have to be four inches off of the ground for us to get, I think it's 50 points. Right, 50 points. And then, so we, we do all of that, and then our partner, our alliance uh, partner, does that too, and we combine the two points, and then the other team does that, and whoever has the most points wins. But another big thing about first is when they place you in your rank at the end, what ends up happening is you get more points if it's a closer match than if you've dominated the team. So it kind of teaches us that we won by skill, and uh, we won because we were doing like we were doing what we were supposed to doing. So did the other team. We just did it faster. We just got uh, more points, like maybe ten points. There's a couple of player, people who win match by one point, and so um, that's what we do. So right now we're gonna give a demonstration of driving the robot. Can all the kids come up towards the front so you can all be seen? Just you can stand in front of these guys; they don't care. You can stand up here. <laughs> right? Yeah. Keep coming. <clears throat> right hand. No, 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 please do. Come Thank you. Real life. <laughs> this is real life. There's nothing like troubleshooting in the field. Right. <laughs> How long did they give you to build your robots um, and design it? Uh, it basically till the uh, first competition, and ours is in December. So when did they notify you that you start? Uh, they notified us, and uh, at the, well, basically at the beginning of our school year. So uh, well, it was like August. a month into it, so yeah. September, around September, that August, time. like yeah. late August. Well, you completed a lot of work in a short amount of time. Always have a backup. Good job. <laughs> We 
have those programs yet. The servos. You don't have the servos program, which is basically where those, um, it basically moves those in and out so we can get oh, the box. We don't have the program yet. So, of course, they don't have Oh, that's not so the gear that's moving is supposed to move the thing that's supposed to lift the robot, but that's not working either. It was working yesterday. <laughs> well, this is the time to practice and to test right. it out and not in real competition. So we're, yeah, better we're glad that you're able to do that here tonight. Well, and I wanted to say that I'm, this is such a great experience for all of you, and I just, I'm sure you've heard this from your teacher and your parents, but I actually work with a woman whose daughter got a full-ride scholarship to Michigan Tech University based on her robotics work. So it is worth your while to stick with it and learn lots of stuff with this, with this program. So I just wanted to really encourage you. I mean, it's not just a short-term thing for this year, but you can set your sights high and it's rewarded for your hard work. So thank you very much and congratulations. Yay. Do, do any parents want to get pictures of them? Did you have a chance to do that with council if you want to, so that they can stand in front with their project? Picture yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on around and stand in front of it, over on this side. Uh, or that or that way, yeah. <laughs> you can include this on your college applications that you were actually doing it for many, many years. <laughs> now it'll work. <laughs> I'll hold it then. Just throw it up. <laughs> 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 Same thing with that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's excellent. We're good? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much for taking time. Well. Come and share. Nice hat. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Thank you very much for spearheading a great project. We're happy to have your school in our community. So thank you so much. Looks like the box is in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the next thing on the agenda is the consideration of a request for a special events <coughs> permit by Woodpile Barbecue. Um, and we got a memo from the chief, Harry Anderson, um, regarding his concerns on the, on the an event that Woodpile would like to have on November 17th. Scott from Woodpile's here if you want to oh. have him come up. <clears throat> hey, Scott. Good Welcome. evening. Good evening. Thank you. And do we need a motion to move forward, or would we just like to give the floor to, to I think, Scott? I think we need to know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, Gosh. so for this event, um, we do this every fall, and uh, we host 20 barbecue teams that come in and utilize the parking lot at Woodpile. So we close off the parking lot to, to car parking. They come in, they put their smokers there. Um, they'll uncouple them from their, from their trucks or their trailers. 
and then um, they they will get to our parking lot about six o'clock in the morning, and then they will uh, at two o'clock. So they'll start smoking uh, first thing in the morning, and then at two o'clock um, we we do the judging of those those teams, um, and then we award uh, trophies and prizes um, to the uh, the top two or three teams, and then. Uh, during that time, usually starting at about 11 o'clock, um, that's when the public will come by. And um, it's not a tasting for the public, but you know they'll, they'll ask for tips from the different smokers. These are all amateur smokers that show up. But there's a big, a big uh, competition subculture that's out there. And uh, this is one of the things that we don't make any money doing this, but we just like to do it to promote the barbecue industry. Um. You've done this in the past. In the past, did you not request um, a liquor license, and that's why it makes this different this year? No, we requested. I'm not sure that we really needed to because this is on private property. I, I think the special event request forms are for when we want to use, I, I, it was my understanding, if we wanted to utilize um, public space. But uh, we just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we're going to be doing this. We do have a liquor license, liquor license at Woodpile. We'll be putting up um, temporary fencing around the parking lot so that that no drinks will leave the parking lot. And we'll also be bringing in, because there will be more people there than is typical on a, uh, on a Saturday morning, we'll have two porta potties there in addition to the bathroom that's inside Woodpile. So this is more or less just us letting um, you guys know that we'll be doing this. It is an event. Um, we also um, have got uh, an agreement with the church at Clawson. Um, which is two blocks south of our property, to utilize their parking for overflow parking. And uh, I know that that's been a, a sensitive issue with the city, the parking around Woodpile. Uh, I also want to let you guys know that we've had conver initial conversations with them since our initial meeting um, went extremely well, and we're expecting um, a proposal from them this week on a shared parking um, arrangement. Will there be any presence in the tavern's parking lot to prevent patrons that are attending your event from parking there it, that you would be providing to them? Um, we, can, uh, we can do that. We can make sure that one of our employees is actively out there making sure that nobody parks in tavern's parking lot. So do you, do you normally allow alcohol into your parking lot? I, I don't understand the need to... No, no, we don't. Um, because... We're, we're not allowed to because there's vehicles in the parking lot at that time. Um, but this, we will not have any vehicles going in and out of the parking lot. It'll be a closed, it'll be basically closed off during the event. And so the purpose of allowing alcohol into the parking lot is? Um, that's where the crowd will be. Like normally the crowd is, is confined and we don't let anybody leave our covered pergola without, with the alcohol in their hands. We have signs up and we make sure we tell people that you can't even let go um, you know, in, into the parking lot with a uh, with an open uh, with open alcohol. And so, so that's so the, the so the team like it mainly be the team members and 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 their supporters um, are the ones that would would be uh, if they had an, a, a drink or two while they're they're doing the barbecue. And so that's the purpose of the special request is to allow the team members or people to take alcohol into the parking lot. Is that the purpose? Correct. Correct, because it's outside of our, so we have to get this approved by um, the, the Michigan Liquor Control Commission um, because our boundaries have changed for this one-day event. How are you going to alert people to um, alternate parking for this event? Um, I would propose that we get an A-frame sign um, that says additional parking um, available at uh, the church at Clawson. But there won't be any parking available on your lot at all that day. There will so not. there won't be additional parking. It'll be Park, the yeah. parking Park, for parking the available. Yeah, yeah <laughs> correct, correct. I mean, the park, there, event there's parking, parking is down there. <laughs> that, that's correct. Event parking at Church of Clawson. They, they they do have parking like on Main Street in front of us. And do yeah. folks? Sorry. sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> do folks register ahead of time? Uh, they do. Okay. We've had ten teams register. Um, we, we cap it at 20. Okay. I'm expecting about 15 or 16. So you could definitely communicate with them ahead of time, the parking situation as well. Yes, we'll have the contact information for, for all the participants. Anyone else have any other questions? <clears throat> now, I, and I, I've talked to your neighbors in the past, and they say that you're really good neighbor so that is definitely in your favor thank you 
and they, they enjoy this event. I know that the previous yeah, we, event, previous um, times you've had this, they've spoke very highly and enjoy. Yeah, it's mutual. We love our neighbors as well. Um, if I can just say something to, to Scott, as you know, we're meeting on December the 5th, and I think feedback at that meeting on the experience, this experience and issues might be helpful. Okay, and, and we hope to have that parking arrangement yeah, I, nailed down by then. Okay. And if we weren't to approve the special events permit, you could still have the event, you just couldn't serve alcohol in the parking lot or? or... That's correct. What's the deadline for um, submitting the request to the uh, Michigan um, Commission? Tomorrow. How late are you going to be going with this? So it, uh, it goes until, so the judging starts at 2 o'clock. It will take about an hour. So that will be done by 3 o'clock. Okay. Uh, that's actually our, kind of our slowest time during the day, after the lunch rush and before dinner. Right. So at, at the end of the... The three o'clock, then there's no longer alcohol in the parking lot that day, or is it? Will it be extended based on? You know, I, I can't answer that. I, I, I don't have the application in front of me. We dropped it off. My other partner dropped it off. So I know that on the application it says that the end time is three p.m. And I guess I'm just kind of, when's the fencing going to be broke down immediately fouling, or is it that it's going to extend? Well, we'll be taking, so we'll be taking the fencing down to allow the vehicles to come in and pull their smokers out. So at that time, you know, we won't, we won't be allowed to have any alcohol if we don't have the fencing up. And that's, that's a Michigan... In the parking lot. That's a Michigan liquor license rule that once that fencing is down, that's then correct. it's you always no have, longer... You always have to have a temporary fencing up if you're changing your boundaries. Will you both be open for regular business um, that day? We will. Okay. Correct. Yeah, you got some pretty big equipment pulling them uh, smokers in there. You know, a lot of the guys got some big trucks and what have you, but uh, I personally would rather see the big trucks parked down at the church and not down the side streets. And uh, we will we will make sure that they get instructions. nobody because we will be there when they're setting up too. So that's a, that's a time we can also tell them is okay. this is where you'll park. It's two blocks this way. And definitely nobody at the tavern parking. Definitely, <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, just the meeting moving forward, it's I'm sure in your best interest for this to go without issue. Without a hitch, um, yes, it is. Yeah, as Mr. Kingsup pointed out, mentioned, yeah, yeah, this will be a good uh, a good trial case. Yeah, Do we will make a, sure they're yeah that the partners are well represented in. Our I apologize, but I don't know. Does Woodpile have a website so that you could put a, that information up on your website? We we do. We're going to put it on on Facebook. I mean, Facebook it's much more popular amongst right. So that whole, the barbecue crowd that's going to want to come and get some tips, they'll also be aware of the uh, you know, parking yes. is available at the church. <laughs> yes, yes. I think that's the concern of mine is the parking situation and not and having as little impact as we can on the neighborhood as far as double parking and people inundating yeah, uh, and it doesn't, the street and not being able to pack out of their parking lot. Yeah, and it doesn't, I mean, we call it an event. It really, you know, if we have 20 teams, there might be an additional 50 people that show up because of this. It's not a huge draw for the public, but... Well, last year you had quite a showing. It might have been in this past spring. Was it was the fall or the spring you had, it was quite a busy place. It was, uh, the, the parking lot was full. Yeah, but it's, it's, as you know, it's not a huge parking lot by the time you put all the smokers in there, too. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. It's up to council to make a motion. Madam Mayor, I move the special events permit request by Woodpile Barbecue to hold a barbecue rib burn-off event in the city of Clawson on November 17th, 2018 be approved. Support. Roll call, please. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffat? No. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Ah, uh, yes. And a motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great event. Thank you, Thank you Thank very you. much. Do what you can. <laughs> <I will. clears throat> the next item on the agenda is a public hearing 
for the solicitation of public comments on the 2019 program year community development block grant application. <clears throat> um, the, this, as we call it around here, the CDBG grant is um, some monies that we have used in the past for um, different items. A lot of the times it's been used for handicapped domes and the um, sidewalk things. So we're looking for the public to have any comments or suggestions. Uh, one, I just want to chime in. So once you uh, open the meeting for public discussion, which you will, uh, no one on the council or anyone employed may speak. It's just the public and what's uh, Haven is, of course, welcome to come up and uh, speak. But so yes, please. You are officially opening it, right? Hello, um, my name is Chelsea Holmes, and I represent Haven. Um, our address is 801 Vanguard Drive. It's V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D in Pontiac, Michigan, 48341. Um, I am a first response court advocate from Haven, and I actually work in the 52-4 district <coughs> court. So I work directly with people from Clawson. Um, I want to begin by thanking you for your help and support that you've given to Haven in the past. Um, as you know, we are an agency that helps survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, your support last year enabled us to serve 20 people from the city of Clawson. Um, that doesn't include uh, folks who we may have served anonymously. Um, and we ask that you continue that support again this year. Again, thank you. And if you have any questions, um, I'd be more than happy to answer them at this time. At this time, I don't have any questions or any other comments during public discussion. Public discussion is now closed. Did anybody have any questions regarding Haven? I, say, I have a comment that you do a great, great service in. Yeah. We're lucky and very grateful that you are servicing Clawson because it provides a great resource to people when they need it. So thank, thank you. you. It's a great city to work in. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I also have brochures and stuff and fact sheets if you'd like them. Okay. Can I bring them over here? Yeah. So the next item on the agenda is consideration of program of approving the program for the 2019 Community Block Grant Fund. Mayor, I move the 2019 Community Development Block Grant application be approved and submitted to the Oakland County Community and Home Improvement Divi Division as recommended by the administration and to authorize the mayor to sign the sub -re receipt agreement. Support. Roll call, please. Councilmember Moffat? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. The next item on the agenda is consideration of the resolution approving a corrective action plan for the City of Clawson for the defined benefit pension system in accordance with PA 202 of 2017. Um, Mr. Pollock, could you speak to this on the details of why we are doing this? Yes, um, back in April, uh, State Treasury under Public Act 202 asked for uh, waivers of, of um, corrective action plans to uh, be submitted. And if you were less than 60% funded in your pension plan, um, you had to file a corrective action plan. Uh, we made the request when we submitted the waiver back in April uh, to because we knew we were uh, funding with pension bonds that they grant the waiver. Um, they did not because of the timing. Um, so this is the next step in the process is to um, file a corrective action plan with state treasury. And uh, I did speak with them uh, about a month ago and asked if now that we're fully funded in our pension plan through bonding, if that was sufficient for the corrective action plan, and they said absolutely it would be. So all this is doing is, is submitting a report that shows that we're now 100% funded, 
the corrective action plan is that we've already corrected uh, the, the deficit funding, which was under 60%, but now that we're 100%, this step will now remove us from the corrective action plan list, and that goes through the board um, that reviews at Treasury, and once they receive this, uh, they just called today, in fact, to make sure it was gonna be submitted. And uh, once it's submitted, we should be removed from the corrective action plan requirement list. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I move the resolution approving a corrective action plan for the City of Clawson for the defined benefit pension system in accordance with PA202 of 2017 be approved and to authorize City Manager Mark Pollock to complete and submit the required plan to the Department of Treasury. Support. Any questions? Roll call, please. Councilmember Ulrich? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffat? Yes. And the motion carries. The next item on the agenda is consideration of approving a resolution opposing Michigan Senate Bill 637. The resolution states, whereas Senate Bill 637 was adopted by the Senate despite a likely negative impact on local units of government according to the Senate bill analysis, and whereas SB 637 will prohibit Michigan municipalities from charging a wireless communication provider a rate or fee for the use of the public right-of-way, except as provided in the Act, and whereas SB 637 will erode the constitutionally recognized local control of the public right-of-way by Michigan municipalities, and whereas SB 637 will grant an unnecessary and undue advantage to wireless communication businesses to install small wireless communication facilities and poles in the public right-of-way under the reasonable control of Michigan municipalities, without first obtaining a franchise from Michigan municipalities similar to other utilities with pipelines, wires, cables, and utility poles located in the public right-of-way. And whereas SEMCOG opposes the legislation based on the concerns that local governments are being severely restricted in their oversight of the use of public's right-of-way, which will inevitably create significant conflicts with other right-of-way users in the future. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Clawson City Council joins the Road Commission of, of Oakland County, SEMCOG, Oakland County Elbrooks Patterson, and Wayne County Executive Warren Evans in opposing Senate Bill 637, and the City Commission urges Senator Marty Nolenberg and Representative Marty Hol Martin Hauerlach to oppose SB 637 because of the negative impacts on Michigan municipalities and the loss of reasonable control by Michigan municipalities over the public right-of-way. The city clerk shall send this resolution to Senator Nolenberg and Representative Hauerlach if it is approved. Mayor, I move the resolution opposing Michigan Senate Bill 637 be approved and authorize the city clerk to send this certified resolution to Senator Nolenberg and Representative Hauerlach. Support. Were there any additional questions, comments regarding this? I just want to say this was um, discussed at length at the Michigan Municipal League conference, and um, they, they are also not um, in favor of this bill. Roll call, please. Mayor Willie? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Ulbrich? Yes. And the motion carries. Mr. Kingsup, should I have asked you if you wanted to make a comment regarding that? <laughs> well, I just wanted to, <laughs> to indicate that uh, this is, again, uh, another piece of um, legislation that imposes, when they talk about small um, cell uh, facilities, when you look at the amount of information that's obtained and the extent of information that's disseminated, they're really not small cell. They're considerably large from the standpoint of their activity of communication. But what happens is that they use the telephone poles for their access. If there are problems, they may, in certain areas, use streets and then go up to the telephone pole. And if there are problems of removal, or corrections that have to be made, uh, it comes upon the city to do that, uh, not the, the cell phone company. So the burden, they pay us $20 a year or so for each one, and that's it for five years, and it goes up 5%. But if we have to open our infrastructure 
to repair, if we have to remove those, that's an expense which is way and above $20 because it's the manpower used, the equipment used by us to remove those. So the costs are being extended to us. If you knew and appreciated how much income they get off of this, you would shake your head on why they're only paying $20. It's astronomical. This is big business, and I've dealt with uh, these companies up north on water towers, and they get a bundle of money. So there's legitimacy behind this particular resolution and act. Thank you for your legal opinion. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is consideration of pl placing delinquent city billings on the winter 2018 tax roll. Um, yeah. Madam Mayor, I just wanted to uh, give you an update that the treasurer stated that the fire inspection will be, uh, there was an individual that paid, so that will be decreased by $40. And the rental application uh, amount will be decreased by 3200 because there was, uh, there were some bills that were paid before they were being transferred. So the total now uh, to be transferred to the Winter 2018 tax roll is $22,308.66. Uh, you know, I, when I was reviewing them, why is it that there's so many rental properties that haven't paid their bill? Is that unusual? Um, is it that we just, that's how we bill them, is essentially by putting it on their tax bills? Do you, can you speak to that, Mr. Pollock? Um, we do send a bill. Um, we're not sure why majority of them do not pay. Um, maybe it, they figure it's convenient to just have it rolled onto their onto their taxes. But um, it's it's similar with some of the fire inspections as well. We don't know why so many people just don't pay it. They allow it to be rolled onto the taxes. Um, we don't know the reason, um, but they do get notice and they do get time to pay it. They just wait and let it get rolled onto yeah. taxes. I I had spoken to a business owner that said that the fire inspection billing had not been consistent. Okay. Um, and that one year they got a delinquent bill, but they didn't get the bill, and then they paid it this year, and they were refunded the money. So there seems to be some confusion on that. Okay. And it may have just been that it's been a changing of who's handling it. Mm -hmm but it do certainly doesn't seem like it's been consistently handled by in all business cases. I'll check with John Ruthenbeck. He, he is working with John Weingarten and trying to get the billing end of that straightened out. Um, so there's some duplication as well that I think we started to resolve. So I know John and John will be working together to get that issue resolved. Thank you. Do they bill to the owner of record and also to the property? Do you double, do you it, send two notices? It's generally just the Property owner. Right. I know from experience that some communities do both because that there's kind of no excuse, right? Not that necessarily a tenant will pass it off, but generally. Well, the property owner, we certainly get it when it goes on a tax roll. So well, it's sure, easier from a collection standpoint. Mm -hmm. Just need a motion. Madam Mayor, I move the list of delinquent city billings be placed on a winter 2018 tax roll. Support. Roll call, please. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is discussion of the process and the selection of a new city planner. Um, the city sent out um, RFPs, which is a request for proposal, um, and that we had five applicants that submitted their proposals that all were in order, and those five um, companies presented what they will be offering to the city last Wednesday, last Tuesday evening. <clears throat> so I'd like to open the floor to discuss opinion so that we can <clears throat> narrow it down. Just to, just to clarify, is it, um, and I'm not sure of whom I'm asking this question, but is it appropriate to be discussing cost um, at this juncture? I don't see why not. 
So do we make the decision based on the most fiscally responsible or the um, best presentation? I think it's everybody's got their different <clears throat> reasoning on why they're going to decide on. <clears throat> certainly, <clears throat> the the cost was much different. Mr. Pollock, did you get? Did you see if you could find that that um, number that I'd asked for earlier? Yeah, it's it's pretty detailed. I'm sorry, I didn't get time to That's okay. kind of narrow it down, but it's it's pretty close to the requested amount. Uh, the mayor had asked me to see if I could figure out what McKenna had paid over the last couple of years. And uh, there's not much fluctuation with office hours. They have billed us for those uh, fairly consistently. They have averaged somewhere around 20 hours a month. Uh, and that cost has been, you know, significantly lower, I think, than was proposed for some of the other uh, vendors. And then the the difficult part of it is they also bill for site reviews, zoning fees, within their monthly billing. So those are the pieces I would have to separate out. But I would say their 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 proposal was 6% lower than current. Um, so if we added 6% to the costs, that's pretty close to what they've billed consistently uh, to us monthly. The, the um, um, issue of what we, if we're busy and we get a lot of site plan reviews, we pay them more because we pay them per site plan review. So we had some very busy years where we were getting a lot of site plans and their bills were higher and, and some of that was concerned because the bills we were paying were significantly higher than what we had budgeted. But the issue was we were also getting revenue because we collect a site plan review fee. And in part of this process, we'll have to review and evaluate. Um, I think the fluctuation between site plan review charged by the applicants was around $500 up to about $800 per review, and then they add more depending on acreage, but um, they were fairly close. But those are fees we collect, and there may have to be some adjustment to those fees. Right now, we, we charge $1,500 for a site plan. That also covers an engineering review fee. So um, we may want to look at that. I think based on what uh, I read from cost proposals, the $1,500 would cover all of the applicants. As far as the review fee, it would just depend on if there were additional um, costs on top of that, they would be billed, but generally they're collected from the applicant. Because when I was looking at, and that was one of the, my additional concerns was when I look at the differences in the commercial site plan, it could be twice as much as what is being currently billed for that. And is that going to double the cost for our businesses coming to town, or is it that we're going to make less revenue as a city because we're going to have to eat more of that cost in our fee. We would need to evaluate whether or not we wanted to collect <coughs> uh, additional revenue in our site plan reviews depending on who was chosen. But our fee we collect now would be covered by any of those fees that we collect. Um, but obviously when you have a difference of 500 or 800 that would be $300 less that we would collect if it was $800. So we may want to look at an increase in our site review fees. But right now, if all of our costs would be covered, it would just be less. We would get less revenue, or we would retain less revenue if we went with one of the higher review fees. Do we know how our um, site plan review costs are compared to other communities? Um, I think the last time Jim and Susie checked, we were, we were still you know, lower to medium as far as what we bill, what we charge. So we're, we're still somewhat on the lower to middle end of that. Um, there are communities that charge significantly more. I would want us to stay friendly and um, you know, not be exorbitant in cost, but if there is room for a little bit of adjustment, perhaps it's a good thing to look at in the future. So, and then another, I guess just kind of to open the discussion, one thing that I was really excited to hear was an offer for training um, at least once a year. And I know that our current city planner company, McKenna, offered to that, but I don't know that I've heard that offer before. Um, and I think it would be a great thing for council or the zoning board and planning commission and really anybody that'd be interested in that additional training that they offer once a year would be a great thing for us to take advantage of in the, and taking into consideration and selecting a planner.
Have we had input from administrative staff? Has Jim or anyone provided any type of input? I know he was at the meeting. They, um, I think they spoke with Mike about their thoughts. And again, they, upon review of the presentations, they kind of ranked them uh, how they thought the presentations were done. Uh, I don't think they gave any consideration to cost when they did their original review. But I did send them today a, a copy of, of what I sent to council. And then uh, Matt Albrecht also did a, a review of the fees. Um, it was difficult to kind of put it together and compare apples to apples because they had so many different levels of costs. I mean, some gave all costs for everything they would propose, and then some gave just the basic hourly rate. So uh, I tried to put it together in an average monthly billing that we get now currently from McKenna so we could compare the costs uh, from month to month. Um, which the summary I gave, but they, they, they just did it based on what they thought the presentations uh, or how the presentations uh, came across. But uh, they, didn't, they didn't evaluate the cost into their summaries, so. Uh, I personally felt all five of them present, presented well. They were all eager. Um, the fact that they submitted the proposals and, and showed up showed that they were eager. I felt each one of them had differing levels of experience. I think some of those companies that had the higher cost, we could see um, why they might have a higher cost, just based on their presentation and the type of organizations that they run. And um, you know, marketing and promotion is expensive, and I'm not knocking it at all. They, they did a great job. But I think we need to, it's kind of like going on a college tour. Everyone, every college tells you that they're the best, the brightest, they have the best rec facilities, the best place for your kids to sleep and eat, best entertainment, and you can go to the worst school and they're going to tell you the exact same thing. And it's, you know, it's a dog and pony show when you leave and you drop your kid off, then you find out the truth. Um, I, I feel like we have to really weed this out based on what we want and not necessarily on the things that were given to us, and I feel like we ha we're not there yet. That's my personal opinion. I think we need to have some discussion to figure out, and I really would like Jim involved in the discussion. He's the one that deals with these people on a regular basis, and we might be missing something totally just by going cost and um, skill base without their without his input. I just feel like it's fair. And, and I did talk to a, a few members of the planning commission that uh, attended and um, got some information from them on their impressions of each group. Um, and so some of the comments were that um, with Giffels, Webster, um, someone had worked with them in the past, and you know, as we know that they worked with our DDA and did the master plan, so they have some history with Clausen, um, and, and they felt Giffels has done a good job for them. I also reached out to um, a city that Giffels is currently working with, and they had nothing but high praise um, regarding the work that they've done. Asked them if there was any surprises, um, things to know that, you know, kind of as uh, Councilman Milan had said, that their presentations may be great, but how do they work in the field? And they had nothing but high praise for that organization. And honestly, when I was trying to compare my, from a finance stump numbers, apples to apples was looking at the the lowest um, submitter, which in this case was McKenna, but I did not realize that they had lowered that by 6%. And if that's the case, the spread isn't as much as I was anticipating of what we've been paying in the past. Um, so, uh, um, let's see, so there was um, comments regarding um, the McKenna presentation that there, that they didn't feel they provided as much detail as some of the others. Um, the Whitman organization um, felt that they were interesting um, and that they were enthusiastic and that um, the, the proposal probably helps elaborate on what they are really capable of as a company. Um, and comments regarding Beckett and Rader were worked with them before, and um, they're a large firm with staff in every discipline, and that they appreciated the fact that they brought their GIS expert in, and um, they were curious to see if they've had any reference communities in their proposal similar in size to, to Claussen. Um, and the other applicant, 
safe built studio. Um, the concerns there, and I would agree, was um, a lot of the questions we asked were answered by the senior gentleman of the group. However, the senior gentleman of the group was not who was going to be doing our city hours. It was going to be the junior person, which I don't know would have as much knowledge in dealing with some of the more complex issues in town that we're facing. I also particularly liked a couple of the companies that talked about their ability to secure grants and to help guide us in that process. I think that was really important and something we need to definitely, we've talked before about being able to, you know, get more involved in learning about grants and securing grants. Mike, did Jim, did Jim express a preference for any particular company or did, is, are you comfortable sharing his thoughts or? Are, are we able to, is that something? We did all speak. We all talked about it at the end. We do have our top two slash three based on proposals and the actual presentations. Again, the financials, what's that? I, say, I think we're gonna make sure that we let um, individuals in the audience speak as well, because I think we have two people from the Planning Commission that had both attended that they may want to yeah. weigh in on the discussion as well. I won't state uh, the actual rank, just because I don't wanna, but the, the top three, I guess we can say, uh, that we had uh, were that we all kind of came to the conclusion were Giffels, Webster, Beckett, and Raider, and Whiteman. Based on all of that, again, the financials, we didn't delve full into that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Ulbricht did, as did Mark, so I guess then that's where it's kind of, but based on the proposal and the presentations and delving into the experience that they have with the city and with other cities, uh, those were the top three that we felt kind of between Susie, Jim, and myself after after we spoke. I'd like to invite um, members if they'd like to come up and share any thoughts they had after the during the presentations. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. It was a long day yesterday. <laughs> thank you. Rescripture <laughs> Planning Commission. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting us and for letting us be aware of that. It was a really good experience. We didn't have all the same information you guys have, like the cost and the packet and stuff, but I do think that for once, maybe, we all kind of are having some agreement. I, I can tell you honestly, and talking to Melissa and some other conversations, I mean, I can't actually speak for them because they're not here, but... I would have to say none of us have been really happy with the McKenna replacement, and based on the presentations that we saw, we didn't feel that they were, it doesn't sound like they made it as a finalist in your kind of ranking. I don't think they'd have made it in ours either. Um, the, I can't remember the names like you guys are doing right now. The first one, we were, we were impressed by, at least from the presentation. Um, the fourth Giffels one was the first one. The first one. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I don't know the cost, so obviously those are factors that you guys are going to have to figure in. The fourth one, um, I think, had some good energy there. Um, definitely the last one, we were really, un yeah, I, I think that was universal. Safe Built Studio was our yeah, that was, one on there. Yeah, that was uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and, and then the, the you know, if it, it, I guess if it kind of boils down to cost and all the information that what was the, was it the Whitman? third? Is that what the, the, the one that would Grand have to Rapids drive? Area. Yeah. Or Marshall, I'm sorry, it was in yeah. Marshall. I mean, I, I think we were talking afterwards and we kind of felt like what they may have lacked in maybe some of the same higher level experience, they sure had the enthusiasm right. and they sure had the right attitude and they sure had done their research. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were really impressive that way. Was... If they brought to this job what they brought to that interview, so if it ends up being a question of money and six of one, I mean, they end up being the best we can afford, that would be, you know, I don't, I don't think we'd be miserable with that choice, but I, I think one and four were really our strongest um, when we talked about it later. So, and it doesn't sound like any of us are disagreeing on the last one, and it doesn't sound like we're really <laughs> disagreeing on the, so, so I think that, you, you know, we, we would get some good commissioner support with some of the choices that, that it sounds like you're also narrowing them down to. So at least that's what I would share. And I don't know if Greg had any opinions because you were there too, <laughs> anything you liked or. So yeah, but thank you for letting us be part of the process. It was really nice to be there and, and listen to that. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your, your comments. I think if nothing else, uh, this is a good, uh, this process <clears throat> to me has been a good reminder of why it's uh, a good idea to regularly evaluate um, your government, and uh, 
I think sometimes complacency can set in when people get too comfortable. So um, I think that's a, a good thing. It's a healthy thing. Um, uh, longevity does not always uh, equal the best uh, thing. Um, in my I opinion, communities change too. So I mean, so absolutely. what was good for us absolutely. 20 years ago is not necessarily Regularly, we um, need yes. to go. Evaluating yep. it on a regular basis is yep. an important thing. Not necessarily changing it all the time, but <laughs> evaluating it regularly. <clears throat> um, I would I would say, in my opinion, I think two were disqualified. Um, to me, only one, only because of the distance. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, quite a ways. And I wish they were a little bit closer, um, even if they were half the distance away. Um, I think it, it would make things a little bit easier in my mind. Uh, and the other one, I think, was a lack of preparation. Um, coming into City Hall and suggesting that we do things uh, downtown, like on-street parking, um, you know, which has been there for decades, I think. Um, it's, uh, I think that just shows a lack of um, attention uh, that, that could have been afforded um, and I would have preferred to have seen. Um, and, and so in my mind, the, the three that I, I like are uh, Giffels, um, B and R or whatever. That, um, Beckett and Rader. Beckett Rader. Rader and Rader. And McKenna only by virtue of, uh, of cost savings there. Um, but as, as was suggested to me by planning commissioner, sometimes you get what you pay for. Um, and I, I think we just have to... But at the same time, we, we can't spend money we don't have, so we, we just have to be careful with that. I think um, I think there's a consistent theme here. My top two were Giffels and Webster, and Beckett and Rader as well. Um, so if we have a consistency with the top two, are we comfortable with moving forward to the next step? Oh, looking at me. Do you have, do you have an opinion there, Mr. Well, I yes. like the uh, Giffels. They were the first ones, right? Correct. Giff, Giffel, Webster. Uh, they put on a very good presentation. They all did. Uh, and uh, but you know, it's, I got to lean. Uh, I'm leaning on McKenna because uh, they know this community. They know everything about our town. Uh, you know, uh, and they've always uh, whatever we needed them, they were there. So, I mean, we're all here. We got a difference of opinion. Sorry, but that's the way I feel. <laughs> no, that's why we're uh, here to discuss it all. So, yeah. so with them are the two. And I feel like a couple of them are just too far away to come here. Yeah, because then, the, you know, I think as uh, Matt had mentioned, the company that came in and talked about our on street parking also bragged about the fact that they were only four miles away. Oh, right. Kind of was a <laughs> <laughs> hard to believe, but <laughs> come take I'm a look around. On them. You know, and <laughs> you know, and I, I, Giffels, I, I believe their presentation <clears throat> was put together. I looked into their information, and I really liked their education packages that they put out there, available, um, and. They're more expensive than McKenna, but the get what you pay for, and they're close by. So, so I think they're in my top running, and I did really like Whitman, even though they were from Marshall. I thought they spent a lot of time in doing their due diligence, and they really looked at Clawson and spent more time probably than any other group in looking at things. And I would say, though, that all of their research they did was based online. And if they were really that interested, I think it would have warranted a trip out before the night of. And that was the one thing that bothered me about that group's. She talked about she looked online, she looked online, she looked online, and she was really excited. But and she's suggesting that the drive wasn't that bad. So man, come out some Saturday and take a look around and see in person because we say stuff online, but you know, to your point before, being here, being part of the community, grab a cup of coffee at Cave and, and get lunch at Mojave and see the community and be a part of it, you're gonna get more than you are online. And there wasn't the thought to take that leap. And that's what kind of disqualified them. I mean, I, they were enthusiastic and they had some great ideas and she was really a go-getter, but that's 
you know, that's getting to know the community and that's one of the things we really need to and that's kind of what disqualified them in my mind. So how, so how are we going to, do we do this as a? I don't know if it's fair or um, is it in our purview to have three finalists? Is it, I mean, if anybody. It's your discretionary call. Um, I mean, you're candid and forthright in your observations. You all have opinions about each one. And so collectively you have to decide whether you want to address two or three and what inconvenience might arise from that, what advantage might arise from it. I mean, it's an important decision to the community and you wanna be sure that the number appearing are sufficient to give you a panoply of, of observations and opinions from them that may vary and that might swing what your decision is. Because what I'd like to propose on our finalists is to challenge each one of those individuals um, with a project. And I'm, I'm looking at the fact that a lot of attention's put in our DDA, um, and Gipples spent a lot of time working on our DDA project, but I'd like to challenge each one of our finalists to say, pick anywhere in the city and solve a problem that you see and present that and see um, how they're willing to look at our community and solve a problem and see what they can come up with I, I think presentation. That's, yeah, I think that's a good idea, uh, but I posit this to you. If you're gonna give an example, you wanna be um, reasonably certain that your example is realistic and pertinent to the community. Now, there are ways to do that. You come up with it or you get a couple of people from the Planning Commission just to meet with you and give their two cents, three cents, 25 cents, so you have collectively those opinions. And then you can come up with something that could really potentially be dicey and pertinent. For instance... Because I could use our master plan as their basis on something yeah. that's in the master plan as a goal that that's, they are going to... And, and there are some things that can be challenges that, that maybe come to the fore, either from the Planning Commission from, or from your experience about the direction that this city seems to be going and then posit to them a fact scenario about it and given the circumstances what would be necessary for them, the planner, to thoroughly consider all the pertinent uh, land regulations that might come into play and the consequences of those changes on the surrounding areas. And that gives you an idea of how much depth they have, how much experience they have, how much precision they have in, 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 their, in their description and in their answer to that, that factual setting. And it would have to be the same question posed to all. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'd like Absolutely. to see um, a, their finances come back so that they're all similar. So if that means give them um, a, an invoice or, or like we create an invoice for them or whatever that says this is what you did for us this month, bill me and show me how it is. Or even beyond that, come up with a formula that says we will pay, we want this included here, this included here, this included here so that everything is the same. Because there's a lot of spread here in the pricing. I mean, and that's how people, that's how companies make money, mm -hmm. and it's nothing against it. But when you have ambiguity, you get greater costs generally. And I'm in my professional business is we deal with things like this, and you will be surprised how quickly these things can escalate, well, or not. <laughs> to that, uh, Giffels and Webster did a great job in outlining exactly what was included in their retainer because mm -hmm. we we outlined ex in our RFP exactly what we were expecting <laughs> and they said we are going to provide exactly this and that's included in our retainer yes. and I think all the other applicants um, did not do nearly as well as I would have hoped in defining that um, and in reviewing our RFP and saying this is included this is included because you've asked for this um, so I I, uh, hopefully, if whoever whoever the finalists are, if they're savvy, they're watching this and hearing us right now. <laughs> um, so hopefully, they're they're paying attention. You may want to ask um, not only posit the example, but but also posit what is excluded specifically. Because here's the thing: planners have an idea about the growth of an area, 
and the time period based on current information in which things might occur. And that's really what you're looking at. You're looking at what is a present situation that then evolves into something that meets the future growth five, ten years ahead. And while you can't predict that with certainty, you have statistical information that's going to give you the detail necessary to at least formulate that forward movement. And that's what you want so that your community knows exactly what the future is. You one, don't have that now. One thing I would love to hear addressed by um, our planners, uh, finalists, is how how can a developed community like Clawson deal with stormwater runoff? Um, I think that's a it's a fairly complex uh, scenario, um, and there's there are a lot of good solutions out there, uh, and their their technology is increasing and. Um, in some of these regards, and that's something I, I, I hope. Maybe to, that would be a nice that maybe, that, maybe that's the that question would be posited in the context of what can the city do with its own structure? Because remember, you're connected to the county system, right? So there are limitations on what you can do just because of that, right? And but it is something that should be considered. I think the sustainability questions. A couple of the companies uh, addressed it from an initial standpoint for just. Um, kind of simple fixes without going into deep into infrastructure for future building and then right. for any kind of renovations that take place downtown. And those are simple, uh, some co more, much more costly than others, but some not that costly as long as you incorporate them in the beginning. So we had a little bit of that glimpse of that. And I liked that question that you posed about that because it gave an opportunity for them to be proactive on something rather than just say, these are our skills. Because I always say, People are going to have the same skills. They're in the same industry. They had the same education and large or small communities. They've had, they've presented, they have put together reports, they have have or have not checked their editing and, you know, gone back and forth. I mean, all of that's the same. It's, it's the details that count. Well, you're challenging their imagination as well. Yeah. And every person, every firm's not imaginative. So let's just be honest about that. So we need to, to look at that part as well. So do we essentially poll for top three for each individual and then Mike uh, does that? Well, I, somebody could make a motion um, who the finalists are. I mean, are, do we want three finalists? Is that? Yeah, I personally think two is sufficient. Two or three, Miss. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I mean, it, I don't think it matters that much if it's two or three. Like, I'm not. I don't have a preference to two or three. I think, uh, just from my own perspective on things, when you're selecting stuff, if I I believe that if uh, two kind of stand above, there's no reason always to have the third one because two sometimes always just a little bit higher. So why I don't want to say waste the time of the third one, but if you can see that two are just like when you're voting, anything mm -hmm. like that. If you can, if it's a vote for three, you know, whatever it might be, normal in normal cases like this, two are going to probably jump ahead of the other people. So, I mean, you can of course do three, but you know, you got to think of the time and things, things like that. And looking at all this stuff, I, we can see that two kind of stand above the other. Well, why doesn't everyone just give top three and then the top two out of the top out of all of us wins? How about that? Well, somebody can make a motion that that we have two finalists, right? I mean, that's, correct me if I'm wrong, that's typically how something like this would go. Um, we make a motion that there be two two finalists and might poll the council to determine them, or how are we going to determine who the two? Madam Mayor, I move <laughs> that Giffels and Webster well, and I Beckett Rader uh, be selected as the finalists and to invite them to participate in a final presentation at the upcoming November 20th, 2018 regular city council meeting for final selection. Support. That's the motion. Oh, roll call, please. <clears throat> Councilmember Milan? No. Councilmember Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Albrick? Yes. Council sorry, Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? No. Was three to two? That's <clears throat> so the motion carries. 
Let me suggest something to you, though, um, and that's what is the project you're going to have assigned and who's going to do it, and is there enough time to have that done for the 20th? I think that it needs to, I mean, it needs to be somewhat of a cursory project because they're not going to give away free services to do a detailed project but enough to understand how they would approach it. And I think that's, we're not so much asking for them to resolve it, but if we asked you to do X, talk to us about what your approach to the project would be and how you'd resolve it. Because I don't think that, I mean, I could be wrong, but they're only gonna afford so many resources into doing an in-depth study of a, a particular project. Well, I guess I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for an. I personally wasn't looking for an in-depth cross every T and think of ever. I just kind of wanted to see that they were thinking out of the box and what would be a creative solution. And I like um, Mayor Pro Tem's suggestion on s saying, give us a solution to a, you know, a water runoff problem and, and leave it somewhat vague. Or yeah, but be sure your question is detailed enough so you know you're getting some real responses that allow you to make an informed decision. That's number one. And again, I, I think a, another component of it is you want to be advised of what's not included in the retainer. I think there, there are two different things in my mind. The, the, a billing example, as Paula talked about, separate from a creative solution to a problem. And... And I guess we could, is that something we can ask the, well, we the building department to, to do? I mean, I don't know, but I don't know that it's something that, well, the planning commission kind of, maybe it, we can, do we challenge the planning commission? My other question, and somebody remind me please, the, the length, uh, the term of this contract that we're engaging them? I, I believe it can be. Whatever we determine. Whatever your agreement says. Yeah. has not been Whatever determined. Agree upon. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, you might want to pause it, and this is just an example only. Uh, give us your opinion uh, in connection with your knowledge of this city, what the critical issues are in planning over the next five and ten years. But I think that's what they... They somewhat presented see. during their presentations. Did they? Are you certain you got the detail? No, but I want something different. I personally just want, I'm looking for something. What are you looking for? You've, you've got something in your head. What is it? You know, I guess I, I just, I want, like you would say, I say that, so, you know, almost where you would challenge a, a student on saying, solve a problem, and how are you going to solve it? What problems? Oh, well, I'll, I'll say at one point I was thinking, okay, we have um, a 14 mile that is not developed and what would be something that they would see that would work in a community here? Our Rochester Road, we've been trying to get that solution for many years. Um, so that's what I was initially thinking of. Those specific areas, find something on 14 mile, or find something on Rochester, or do I dictate? You know, do we dictate? But then again, I like Mayor Pro Tem's thing because sustainability has become um, things, something that we'd asked every one of those applicants about, and I know our community is looking to solve those sort of problems as well. So, so the idea somewhere with, in the middle. The idea with finding something on 14 Mile that you would address as a project isn't anything we discuss because we don't want to just talk about the same stuff we talked about in the presentations. We want something completely new. Um, and I mean, I think that could be a reasonable thing to, because it would require them to come out and take a little bit of a look at our community. And for, you know, they're interviewing us like we're interviewing them and have them, um, you know, see how they, they would have to come out and take a look at the community and see what it's about and that kind of thing. And it would gauge them a little bit with the understanding that we're not asking, you know, huge, but just come to us with suggestions. I kind of like that. I don't uh. mind giving um, 
another two weeks on this as well. <clears throat> because thinking about this, November 20th is two days before Thanksgiving. Agreed. There could be some vacation time that they have planned and to ask this of them. And that time frame might be unfair um, or unreasonable or just mean. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if we want to. I think that's wise. And then do we want their entire presentation to be this one, you know, scenario or uh, what what in addition are we looking for in this presentation? I think Paula's suggestion was a good one too. Yeah. With the yeah, invoice. Those, for me it's those two yeah. pieces. Um, uh, just to see. If I'm responding to the questions, I am not gonna wanna have to respond to something that would potentially be too real world of a situation where you're gonna take my answers, ideas, and run with them with someone else. So um, I, you have to be a little bit vague, a little bit not real world, but relative. So that puts it in a different realm. But I know that um, if someone were to tell me to solve a problem in a plant, I would probably say not, I don't want it. I'm not comfortable with that because I don't want to give away my trade secrets and I don't want to provide a service for you for free. Right, especially even in the beginning when it's like a good faith thing, because right now we're just building a good faith relationship. So it has to be something that's not an absolute. It has to be something that's a little bit vague, but relevant. Well, that's kind of why I talked about describe the process that you would go through as opposed to giving us your actual finished product. You know, if you were to, so if we were to ask you to look at 14 Mile and pick out an area, what tell us what you would do? What would you assess about the area? How would you pick which one? You know, and, and what kind of things would you think about doing? Because then they're not giving us an actual project. They're talking about the process and, you know, what would you investigate to solve and all that kind of stuff without giving away any tangible thing that we could turn around and, and take and not hire them and, you know, have them not get paid for their services because I think that's legitimate. Could we ask questions, a question such as, in addition to providing planning services at meetings, reviewing um, drawings, site plans, et cetera, what, what, what would be your top three focus items for the city of Clawson? Like where would you go? Where would you like to help lead us and direct us? And let them come up with a few ideas of something that, because that means they have to know what our issues are in the community. And then we can see what their focus would be because those are gonna be items that one, they all probably automatically do because you heard them all. They all do the same thing. And their, their, their answers are all the same. I, you asked the same question and they all gave the same answers just in a slightly different roundabout. But if we could see where they would want to go with us, which is kind of why I was asking the question, you know, what, are you a leader or a follower? I just think it's really important to know, are they just gonna sit back and wait for us to say, hey, do we need to look at this? Or do we allow them the opportunity to say, is this the way your community is right now, you would, it would really behe behoove you to address these issues or start planning for these issues? Something like that, does that make sense? So you wanna find out how innovative they are in forward thinking. Yes, yeah, I mean, just like how they would, I, I really just think we need to know how they would serve us outside of the day to day. Well, and outside of the pat answers that they give to any city that they're presenting, we wanna know, you know, we think Clawson's unique and we have our own stuff, so you're in the finalist, speak to us specifically about not just your standard answers, but Clawson itself and our character and our community and how you would address specifically Clawson stuff. And the two, the top two that you named, I have, I will just be honest, I have issues with for real reasons. And the reason <coughs> is they're money powerhouses. They have excellent reputations, both of them. I checked with professional, professional people because we've dealt with both. Um, not I me, mean, not personally, right, but uh, industry-wide. They're both really excellent, but these are people who know how to put on a presentation and they're going to address your questions and they're gonna do it glitzy and they're gonna tell you they can do everything, but every single thing they do is gonna come at a cost and you guys have to, I mean, we have to understand that, that all these things that they will do for us are not part of the normal what we wanna pay for and I'm not saying take the cheapest guy, 
but be aware, right? And be very aware. It's like going to buy a refrigerator. You just need something to keep your food cold. Do you need the drawer? Do you need the TV on the side? Do you need to be able to see your kids at school <laughs> while you're cooking your spaghetti? Probably not, right? Like you gotta figure out what your what the basics are that we really need and address them that way. I'll tell you what though, I always get my refrigerator, the cheapest refrigerator <laughs> I can get. And at work, they bought the expensive refrigerator, and when I put my salad in the refrigerator at work, it stayed five more days the longer than it stays in my cheap refrigerator <laughs> at home. So <laughs> there is some value in, um, you know, in, I think we have really important stuff to do as far as our planning activities. And I think that, you know, we talked about how we are a built-out community and we have, you know, we're in one of the hottest housing markets and we have very specific things to do. I think we should get the refrigerator that keeps the salad five days longer, not the cheap one. I mean, I think that we should spend some money, maybe for a little bit of time, to, to look at some of these more creative, more innovative, the more you know, the stuff that comes at a higher price because we have some real tangible things we want to do. And I'll, and I'll say some of the, the two finalists that we talked about have a lot of resources in-house. Um, and at times that maybe some of those services that we currently contract with other people here in the city or if they aren't available, it gives us an additional resource to be able to lean on. And I did like that as an option. Um, I know that would come at a cost, mm -hmm. but um, if they're already familiar with the community, at least the cost is usually less than starting completely fresh um, from scratch if you have to do that. But we're still back. So I guess... <clears throat> Is this something that we just look to city administration to kind of see if they what they can come up with on paper, well, well, <clears throat> and then we and then um, <clears throat> maybe you know when now I that the election's with, over with the um, with one discussion that we we brought up as a, as an idea, merely an idea, was uh, we could utilize if you want to just be simple, and then uh, we have stacks of old site plans, and they could just do a site plan review. And provide you that. I like that. With a current property or an older property, that was a, a, an idea that came up because then it's just okay. This is what you're going to be doing. Real world things here. You have the site plan. Do your review of it, and then you can base on how their responses to things could be a little slightly different. I like that. That was just, that was an idea that was brought up. And not we're, saying and we're not going to use go with that. that. Not, I mean, we're not. Yeah, really. right. yeah. And let me suggest something else to you as an alternative. And this is from my personal experience on the Rochester Planning Commission. We, the commission, had a number of concerns that were recurrent over a period of time about the fact that the site plans that came to us really gave us no substance on giving weight to certain things. And we began to indicate that the only way we can intelligently evaluate growth is by developing certain factors. So a committee, now, now in that instance, the committee was created and it came up with the factors. And eventually the planner was directed to come up with the measurement that to be used on evaluating all developments that came in. And if you didn't meet a certain th <coughs> threshold, you weren't going to the planning commission. But that was a situation where the planning commission and the community frustrated with how the city process was going, spoke up and demanded that there be a solution, and the planner came up with a solution. So if there's something that is in this community that really is a recurrent problem, then that may be the solution of, here's the recurrent problem. What is the solution? So but is that giving away, is that. that the same issue that we're get, they're giving away a solution to one of our problems that, that we would be, be used? I think that would be different. So say we okay. use the um, uh, people who don't fulfill their obligations for, um, I'm, my, I'm sorry, the terminology is not there. Yeah, like the maybe a temporary people. certificate of occupancy or people, or we gave, we have many um, op opportunities where we have 
allowed a certificate of occupancy and then the people have failed to complete their tasks yes. as assigned, how about we address something like that? Because it's very real world. It causes is cause extreme confusion and a little bit of division and it, it's constantly an issue that we have. So that would be a very, very topical and probably easy to um, address. We can see how they, how perhaps they've addressed the, those issues per, personally, and how they ensure that they do not reoccur or you know continue to occur. Right. Does that solve your concern about uh, giving away solutions? To no, because I think it's different because it's more procedural. It's not really coming up with um, like what would your idea be for this? Here's a a block and this is the current condition and we'd like to see something different what would you what would your ideas be to develop here how would you curb it how would you do all of these other things i think that would be more conceptual and more something that they might not want to share because it's something that they they would seem more proprietary but if it's a um, a procedure and a means of attack on something a method of ensuring um everything is followed in an order, I think that's different. I just think that shows good management and it shows forethought and it just shows um, an involvement, right? Because there's the there's the before, they, they're they the ones that are bringing the people before us or that, you know, they're with them from the beginning. They look at their plans, they come stand before planning commission and they're there when we say yes or no, we'll, we'll take them and we'll, we'll allow you this, um, uh, this break right to get you in and going because we love our community and we want to support every business but then we wait and, and it's so it's October and I don't know um, how many people are before you right now in planning saying yeah sorry couldn't get my concrete done oh yeah sorry couldn't get my trees in right because um, right? this is the time of year and then all we do all we did in planning all planning does is sit there and go okay well I guess it's gonna be April of next year can you make sure it's done in April well yeah probably not April it might be May or June oh so then we're gonna give them to July and then July comes and they're like oh yeah no we don't have it scheduled yet but it's coming right so this whole process it's long like my speech, but that's the process, and it's frustrating. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Because it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely true. We yeah. have a history of doing that, and I'll use the large lot ordinance as an example. Remember, there is a large hue and cry about large lot, large lots, and the preservation of the large lots. And it really wasn't the planner that initiated it, it was the community. And that out spoken element of the community resulted in the open meetings that then resulted in direction to the planner to figure out how you address these concerns and they were eventually addressed. So you've already had that experience and I think using some of your own experiences to that it begins to force them to look at doing things differently than planners might do mm -hmm. but which is really part of their responsibility and you get a better read on how imaginative and intuitive they are. Also, one suggestion that I like, and it's, you know, we're a world from our planning commission that you are a member of, and Councilman Harris is, any else? Well, could we, I mean, could we give them some sort of outline, <clears throat> um, you know, give them kind of a, a free, a, you know, freestyle, <laughs> tell us, you know, what you want to tell us again, regurgitate, or come up with something new to talk about for, this many minutes or, you know, give them some things to talk about. Um, I think a site plan review is a great idea um, of an old site plan. Um, I don't know if, if we can do that and the suggestion about the, the um, TCO uh, issue. Um, I think that, I think those are good suggestions. I don't know if that takes up 40 minutes of a presentation, but um, you can't. It shouldn't, though, right? It shouldn't. Because it's going to give you the ability to determine how definitive they were and how thorough they were or imaginative. So you're saying that you're going to give them each 40 minutes for their presentation? Uh, I think we had said 30 or 40 minutes at some point. I remember, but maybe that was only for the initial yeah, workshop. Initial ones? I, I don't know. <clears throat> Because I don't think that the, the, the solution that you're already ready with, well, I guess if we're planning on doing questions as well. So let's throw this to Jim and uh, <laughs> our planning team and ask them to come up with a couple of scenarios that are most 
prevalent to them, the, the things that are most annoying to have to constantly revisit um, and then go real world. I really well, feel I know like this, that's the smart way to go. The TCL yeah. thing has been circulating and percolating for many years and joint session meetings have been um, pulled together just to discuss solutions for that. So I think that's a great example as well as the in a real invoice. But <clears throat> that's what I like about the site plan review and an old site plan is because then they're going to have to you've reviewed this and now bill us for that site plan. And so you do get both could, sides of it. Could we also ask for um, an example of some training that they might perform um, for our community, you know? And the cost associated with such training? Sure. <laughs> well, I think both, both of those houses actually said that they did one free training session per year. But I mean, ask them to come in and do a five minute training session I know that's not much but cover one point in a training session or I, I don't know I mean or give us an outline because they probably yeah, yeah, an outline, they yeah they I mean I don't I don't want to hire I don't want to hire a planning company based solely on their presentation skills right um, and, or their proposal you know their ability to add some graphics to a proposal but um, I think all of these things uh, in conjunction uh, with each other can help us make our decision well Mike, do you think you can pull something together to send a council that we can then? Uh... Yeah, I know that um, Susie and Jim have been speaking. We were just waiting for tonight. And I know Susie has plenty of ideas in her experience as well in, in speaking with planning commissioners. Uh, you've spoken to planning commissioners. I know we have a wealth of knowledge that of ideas we've discussed a lot tonight. I know that they could easily get something to you. Uh, possibly tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe next week. But I, I know because... Uh, you had spoken about the 20th being the timetable, but... Well, and do, I mean, do we need an amendment to that? I think we should push it out. I think in fairness to the applicants, Absolutely. we should probably we extend it. Absolutely. Do we need a motion for that technic officially, or can we just say that we're going to push that out until December 4th? December 4th? Is that where we're at? Right. Anybody have an opinion on that? What's protocol here? Don't you have to? Mm, I didn't. Did we? Did we officially even say that we we're doing it on? Yes, was it an did. official yeah, the motion, motion said November twenty. You can just do another motion to. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's do like another motion. Madam Mayor, I move that the final presentation of the finalists for city planner be moved to Tuesday, December fourth. Is that the right date? 2018 uh, at the regular city council meeting for final selection. Support. Support. <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilmember Moffat? Yes. Councilmember Albert? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. And the motion carries. And I'm assuming you're, you're, you're directing administration to send out the appropriate letter of thanks to those who will not be appearing. That's yes, please standard do. protocol. <clears throat> and we've also officially asked you to get something together to send to yes. the council. Okay. Any more additional conversation needs to be had on this subject? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> <clears throat> then the next thing on the agenda is consideration of the list of bills. Madam Mayor, pay the bills. Support. <laughs> Roll call, please. <laughs> Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mayor Woolley? Yes. Councilmember Aris? Yes. Councilmember Milan? Yes. Councilmember Moffitt? Yes. And, uh, it's looking like we're going to pay the bills. City Attorney's Report. I just have one comment to make, and that is on the marijuana legislation that was adopted uh, yesterday. Um, I know that there may, we'll probably get many calls about what we're doing and when we're doing it, and we've always had the standard uh, response, and it's still consistent, is that we're doing nothing because this, the state licensing board will be spending a year to do regulations on this. And they've announced that as well. 
Uh, the, the, there is a concern that I have about uh, grow facilities in residential areas because in a facility, it, it, even though you're limited with tall plants, if you don't have the proper ventilation, you're going to ruin the interior of the house. And some of these we've had experience where they've been rented and used as grow facilities. And then at the end, uh, when the person leaves, the house is really destroyed. And so that's a concern that I have. The other concern I know that will exist is what are the measures that the police take to determine uh, whether someone is under the influence and other than blood draw. Um, and so there are a lot of issues that arise that are ancillary, and there's going to be a lot of background studies <clears throat> that we'll probably be giving you reports on just to inform you and to inform the law enforcement and the public about issues that will arise. Can I ask a question relative to that? I know the election results aren't published yet, but Mike, can you let us know what the community voted on Proposal 1? Uh, not at this moment, but I can find it for you. <laughs> those, are those on the yes, county on clerk's website? Correct, they are. Mm -hmm. And they're on our homepage as well. Yep. Oh, are they now? Okay. okay. Yeah. I looked earlier. Just well, and I want to make a comment. We, Clawson as a community is very lucky to have, I believe, three certified officers that have been certified in actually um, this federal training in regard to identifying individuals that are under the influence. And so yeah. that's a great asset to our community. In fact, it might be four now. That's four. Well, I think we need to advertise that, too, as a deterrent <laughs> effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Kingsup, I have uh, two questions. That we referred to you um, the ordinance on barnyard animals uh, and chickens. That's still a work in process. Okay. Um, I know uh, we suspended enforcement of the current ordinance until right. December, middle of yeah. December, I think. Right. Um, so I want to make right. sure that we have sufficient time to to address oh, that's that. That's on the list. Okay, and then uh, also the um, amendments to the Traffic and Safety Board. That's, um, we, we purposely delayed that. The legislation's already done, the ordinance, but we delayed it purposely until December. Okay. So one of the meetings in December, you'll have it more likely the second meeting. But uh, the ordinance on the TNS board is done. Um, the, uh, waiver form that has to be signed is done and uh, so is the policy there are three documents they're all done okay thank you i can tell the um sorry to interject but the proposal 18-1 state of michigan uh in clausen some detail map i thought i had it up no i don't um it appears It uh, was approved overwhelmingly in Clawson. It was uh, precinct one, eleven thirty for yes, five twenty seven no, precinct two, eight fourteen yes, three thirty one, three was seven forty three, three ninety two, precinct four was six six sixty six and three thirty, and precinct five was eight forty eight, five nineteen. So, two to one. Two to one. It was yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Is that all, Mr. Kingsept? Yeah, that's all I have. City Manager's report? I uh, just had one item. Um, I'm sure everyone's noticed the uh, leaf pickup has begun. Um, and, of course, the weather's cooperating, like always. Um, I know they are about a half day behind this week. Uh, they did a great job getting the wet leaves that were out up. Uh, just as a reminder um, to everyone, uh, please don't rake your leaves into the street until the afternoon or evening before they're scheduled to be picked up. Uh, you will see signs in your area, if you don't remember, uh, reminding you not to park in the street as well, because that's been an issue already this year. Uh, if there's a car in the street over your leaves, your leaves are not going to get picked up. Um, so just a reminder, if you can rake them under the right of way and then, you know, either late afternoon or early evening, put them in the street the evening before. Um, and they will, um, if at some point they get ahead, they'll come through and pick up uh, the day ahead, but they will be back always as scheduled on the day. 
uh, that it's supposed to be picked up. So if you see the truck the day before you're due, they will come back the next day so you don't have to panic. And I know, I know it's a panicked feeling because when you have all those leaves and your blower out, you, you want to get them in the street as soon as possible when the truck's coming. So uh, if it's a day before and you're not scheduled, they will come back the next day. But again, just reminding people, uh, try to be courteous to uh, your neighbors and keep your car out of the street that, that day and the, and the best you can. I know it's hard to do at times, but um, and then make sure you don't rake them into the street until the evening before. Mr. Powell, yes. is there... Um, Somebody had recommended to me, and I don't even remember who it was, but leaving some space between your pile of leaves and the curb, especially if rain's predicted to allow for rainwater to flow. It does. If you can do that, I know it's harder on some of the more narrow streets to do that, but if you can leave, absolutely. I guess they call it kind of the gutter line for rain, and rain will drain that way into the catch basins on the street. Um, and especially with the restricted catch basins. If you get heavy rain and you have that path, it will more than likely get into the sewer system where it needs to go. But yes, that is helpful. Uh, you know, even if it's just a few inches away from the curb, that helps. But again, I know at times it's, it's difficult to do that. And we've had, it seems like we get those really windy days and all your hard work ends up on your neighbors. So um, we're asking again, I, I think we're scheduled to go a week later this year uh, than we normally do and we try and stay firm on the date but uh, it's always weather permitting and then when if we get snow early we don't have trucks we use the same trucks for plows so we don't have trucks converted but we always try and keep one and then we'll we'll try and keep everyone informed as to how late we're going to go um, and and help you stay on top of it but it did seem like again it always seems like the leaves fall later and later but uh, with the rain and the cold and the wind a lot have come down in the in the last week, so um, they'll they'll be out there on the days that are scheduled, and if they fall behind, they'll be through. But um, again, just trying to get you to not rake them into the street until the evening uh, before your scheduled pickup day is helpful. Is that scheduled information available online, to, so if I can go check and see if it is. if my street's coming up? Yeah, yeah. The uh, schedule's there, and then we'll try and put more Facebook information out as well as to the schedule uh, as they're going along. If they're behind a little bit, we'll try and get all that information out there for people. Thank you. Anything else? That's all I have. City Clerk's report. All right. And Mayor and Council, I do have following items. Of course, uh, yesterday was Election Day. Uh, we had an amazing turnout. We Our average was 70%, 7-0 which broke records uh, in Clawson as well as across the state of Michigan, which was wonderful uh, for a midterm election in the state. Uh, all resor results are still unofficial. Uh, the County Board of Canvassers, now it's in their hands. Uh, they have until November 20th to certify the results. Um, you can re Again, you can re uh, review the results on the city website, which directs you to Oakland County's website, which we have on the our homepage. Uh, again, we saw a huge turnout in first-time voters, uh, never voted before, and we were noticing even entire families coming all together at the same time. So it was wonderful bringing each other out, neighbors, everyone. Uh, we saw, especially here at City Hall and other ones, just consistent lines, which was just, it was wonderful. Um, and we do want to thank all the residents of the city for being patient during these the entire process, uh, waiting in the lines and taking the time to be a part, of course, of democracy and making your voice be heard. Uh, you know, sometimes when you have that many people, it's a little more stressful, so it takes some more time. You just have to be patient, and we welcome that. Uh, every election does provide us with some obstacles and lessons that we can learn and continue to grow. Uh, we did have a touch rider, which is the, uh, it's the ADA compliant machine that did crash on me at Precinct 3. So I had to have a, a loaner from the county to come out. So uh, that was down until I think I finally had it up and running. Uh, City Manager Mark Pollock, he showed up when I was there. He, he came to vote, so he saw me. It was probably around noon or so when it finally got up and running. So we were down, but, you know, we kept on trucking along with the rest of the stuff. So we have those redundancies in place where we can bring in another one. Uh, and then, again, with the unofficial passage of the state uh, Prop 2 and 3, I'm sure a lot of questions will arise from that. Uh, we will be involved with the education about that with uh, redistrict with the 
voters, not politicians, with which is two, which which that won't come up until the census and all those issues, which that might lead to redistricting efforts in our city, who we don't know. That's years and, you know, four to, I think they said 2022 is when it will be in effect whenever that goes in. And Prop 3, that's going to be a lot of updates. So there will be a lot of, there will be a curve, and we'll be working, I'm assuming, with the new Secretary of State, County Clerk, and all of us on board together to get uh, new training efforts out there, getting the education to uh, the residents, to electors, to know what that means. And then um, we'll continue to learn and grow about that and educate the public. Uh, I want to, of course, thank all of my hardworking team of precinct inspectors, the absentee counting board, the receiving board, uh, my deputy clerk, Victoria, and um, the treasurer's office. They all helped uh, through all this process during the election. Uh, many, 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 many hours are put in leading up to it, uh, the day before, the day of, working on the Saturday, everything like that. Residents involved with their absentees, trying to work with that. Uh, so it was just extremely long and tiring, so we appreciate everyone stepping up to help us out. We're always looking for fresh new faces, so and uh, we've been hearing that we may or may not have a May election next year, so a special one, so we'll see. But for sure, November, we'll have one. So we have a whole year to kind of possibly a whole year or six months. We'll see. And again, finally, I want to thank the voters for um, still unofficially, but approving uh, by overwhelming majority of the two charter amendments that we put on there. Uh, that was my first go at it. It was a lot of work to get that done. I know there was some confusion on some of the stuff, uh, but when you have inter attorneys involved, uh, sometimes the legalese gets uh, <laughs> in its place as we dealt with the attorney general. So uh, that was a lot of hard work, but uh, it's merely the first step in cleaning up our charter. Uh, the first one just basically affords us other uh, opportunities for getting notices and other things out there utilizing modern technology. Uh, since we have Twitter and Facebook, the website, and as we're seeing, I don't want to say the newspaper business is dying, but everything's going more web-based. So our old charter was very explicit with using newspapers and other things like that. Clearly, we're still going to um, post everything, whatever state law mandates. Uh, so we'll make sure that we stand with that, but it will provide us better things. And then uh, the Charter Amendment 2 was just to remove the outdated language um, because it, we don't have a traffic court anymore. We don't have a constable because that was already. So it's just removing that old language that's not necessary in the charter anymore. So once everything is um, certified, of course, we will update our charter and the Municode system. So we'll get that process going once everything's certified. So that will be, that's the first step. There's a lot of things that we want to update. I think I have a list of about 10 more. So each November, we'll start bringing two, three, four, five, something like that forward to the voters, or to you first, to approve to put on the ballot. So that's kind of where we're at. So uh, we'll have more information out there. I'll make sure to put the LEAF information out there on the, the home page. It's under the DPW site, but I'll, I'll push it to the, the new site as well. And we'll get it, I'll have Victoria put it on Twitter and Facebook to really get it out there, especially about you're saying leave space and all that stuff since we've had a lot of rain recently. So might even be getting the, the S word soon, I'm sure. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> so that is all I have. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you for your hard work and getting all of the hardworking volunteers trained and really committing to a smooth election process here in town. And it's a great <laughs> job. So thank you very much thank for you. your team, your, your work and the rest of your team. So thank you. Thank you very much. Were there any, is there any unfinished business? Okay, new business. I have a list. Back into December. Currently we have the Friends of the Library book sale going on and it's going on through this Saturday and you can go to the library and pick up used books and give some more money to our hardworking library folks. Um, Christmas in Clawson is this weekend. I believe it's from nine, noon or nine to four, I believe is the time that those are available. Okay. Um, and the cost for entry is $3. In addition, there's a white elephant sale over at the Senior Center, um, and it's $1 admission for that. And there's all sorts of treasures over there. I hope my brooch lady returns. <laughs> um, coming up on November 12th is the online shopping class at the library from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, on the 14th was pause to read from 4 to 5.30. Please sign up. Um, 
sounds like we're going to have an event at Woodpile on the 17th, so you might want to stop by there. Uh, let's see, there was a few other items that I had that the library had going on. Where does my sheet go? Does anybody want to add something while I'm looking for that? I do know that the book sale is being used to um, buy new computers at the library, so oh. the funds from that. So that's a worthy uh, cause. Uh, here is oh, on Saturday, November 17th of the library. It's the creature feature, and there will be live animals over there. Um, November 28th is the annual tree lighting at the library um, from 6, it's starting at 6.30, and Santa will arrive and get a key to the city. Um, the library also has a drop-in event to make ornaments for the birds, and those ornaments will go on the tree in the Memorial Park. I'm going to don't need to register, and it's Wednesday, November 28th from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, I did want to announce that it looks like we have new staff at the museum. I'm yeah. sure that they will come and uh, introduce themselves. Yeah, the museum should reopen a week from today, next Wednesday. They both have worked out their schedules. To, that we'll have actually two people, uh, Taylor Gibson, which is, currently works at the library as well, and then Renee um, Healy. The girl's name is Healy, yep. Yeah. And she's, she lives in Farmington, but she has a, a child that goes to school in this area. And she'll be working the Sunday hours. They'll be splitting Wednesday, and then she'll be working Sunday. So we'll get it back reopened a week from today. Uh, well, thank you. Um, Carmoni's Pizza is officially open. So go grab a slice over at the new pizza joint in town. And I drove by. I don't know if we officially said, but the Osaka Japanese Steakhouse is open for business. And when I looked at the reviews online, everything was excellent. Well, that's all I had. Anything else? I don't like to open the floor for public discussion. <laughs> Just come to the microphone and state your name and address, please. My name is Joanne McCauley. I live at 121 Renshaw, apartment 102. I would be interested in knowing if there's anything going on with Renshaw Apartments as far as getting new residents in, management or not. We haven't heard a thing. I know that we discussed it, but we'll have to see where that process is going. How do we, how do, as residents, how do we find out? You can come to the city. We, currently, we have we did mail out uh, letters of interest to those who are on the waiting list. Uh, we have honestly, we have not heard back from a lot of people. Have said no uh, to the apartments. Just the timing didn't work for them. They're still, but still stay on the waiting list. Uh, but we are reaching out to them. There are 19 people uh, that are on the current list. Okay. We've sent to the first Good. 10. Good. We have not heard of anyone yet. Uh, so we were going to then move on to the next nine. We assume because. According to our list, there are people that will probably want them. So the lower, especially, yeah. And are you especially trying to rent floor. out the upper also? Yes. Currently, we're sending out the prospective list okay. because uh, we've had two individuals approach us about the management. Uh, we are going now that the election is done. We will start developing that and maybe present to you some options for cost benefit uh, because we've had an individual that's willing to manage as far as to. I guess the general upkeep or whatever, and then an individual who actually runs a management company that could manage it and then maybe contract with that individual who already has established a rapport. But we're, we're open to all kinds of ideas. Now that the election is done, we will be doing that and then hopefully meeting with the residents to discuss kind of where we're at with the timetable. That would things. be nice. Yes. We'd like to know. Yes. Are you aware that on your website that there's no vacancy at Rancho Apartments? I did not, so... That was last updated uh, July of 18, and it says okay. no vacancy. I will okay? update that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public discussion? <coughs> public discussion is now closed. Can I, I'm sorry, can I slip in a Quick kudos to our building official, Jim Albus, who provided entertainment <laughs> to the voters in line yesterday. Uh, he was offering discounts on building permits. <laughs> Nobody bid on it, but he was he was very entertaining, offering coffee, candy. A candy dish got emptied, I believe. So 
uh, and then Barb as well. Barb Chambers tried to entertain people as well. So, but uh, Jim was very jovial and, and had a lot of conversations and was very entertaining. So I wanted to send out kudos to him. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move we adjourn the meeting. Support. Roll call, please. Mayor Willing. Yes. Councilmember Eris. No. Councilmember Milan. Yes. Councilmember Moffat. Yes. Councilmember Albrecht. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Uh.